What's up my lead gen ninjas? This is lead gen Jay here. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you my workflow that I use to set up cold emails using the Google Workspace. Now, I created a video a couple weeks back about how to create cold emails using Office 365. That method is a little bit cheaper for the first year, but if you're not native to the Office 365 environment and you're more comfortable with Google, this video is gonna show you step-by-step -step how I create Google emails that land in the inbox every single time. My workflow is proven to be the best workflow that exists for using Google to set up cold emails on Gmail. So let's dive right into it. And I'm actually gonna be using my new whiteboard, which is super exciting. All right, so why Google? What are some of the options that you need to think about with cold email? So we're gonna put Google over here. We're gonna put Office 365 over here and other over here. Now, a lot of you like to experiment with things like private servers, which is possible, that's setting up your own email server. The problem with this is that once that server gets corrupted or a, a trust flag gets put on it, you can no longer send emails from that server. So Google and 365, no email provider in the world is gonna stop an email coming in from Google or 365. These are the most trusted servers on the market and they have a ton of different servers to rotate from. So if we're talking about server trust, which is one of the main factors in setting up cold email, these Google and 365 are gonna be the best ones. How much do they cost? So each of these cost $6 per month per, per sender. Now, if you saw my last video on 365, you'll know how to chop that $6 into a $2 per month for the first year. So you do save some money with 365. Now, one of the advantages to using Google over 365 is that most users are on Google. And what does that mean? If you upload a profile picture on Google, the end user will be able to see that profile picture and it instills a little bit more trust. This does not have the ability to add a picture. I will say in terms of workflow, these are about the same and they're much easier than setting up a, an email on any other provider like a private server or a Zoho. No, do not use Zoho not build for cold email and a lot of other email providers, if you're talking about like active campaign or MailChimp, do not work for cold email. So don't do it. Either choose one of these two. And my recommendation is Google, if you're willing to pay a little bit more per month. So let's dive into the workflow. How do you actually set this up for use? All right, so it all starts in the Google workspace. So you can type in Google workspace, G Suite login, and then you're gonna wanna get started. Now it's very important here that your Google workspace is tied to your Google domains under the same email address. So you're gonna enter your information and then it's going to ask you whether you already have a domain. Now, if you do, you can say yes, just make sure it's a Google domain. I'm gonna go ahead and say no and I'm gonna go through the entire process with you. All right, awesome. So we found a domain that we're gonna buy. We're gonna say next and then we're gonna check out this domain. I'll see you once I've purchased the domain. All right, important to note here that when you're signing up, it's not gonna give you that $6 option. So it's going to look like $12 per month per email. Sign up for this now, free for 14 days, and then you can downgrade after but very important, it's not gonna make you actually pay $12, you can downgrade when you're done. All right, once you're all signed up, you'll see this screen. Now the admin console is where all the magic happens. This is where you can add domains, add users, update pictures, and basically monitor all of your email sending accounts. All right, so quick tour of the Google admin section. Here you're gonna see users, you're gonna see domains, and on the left side is gonna be your navigation menu. Now the first thing that you're going to wanna do is change that subscription from $12 per month to six dollars per month and they don't make it easy to do this so to change your subscription for that email you're going to come into billing subscriptions and then find that google workspace and then upgrade or downgrade again they don't make this easy they're very smart and then down here google workspace business starter that's the one that you want so two options month to month at 720 they actually increased this price recently or annual for six dollars per month uh, for now i'm going to go ahead and set it at flexible all right now the next thing that you're going to want to do is check on your domains so we can come into account domains and then manage domains and here's that domain that we purchased get ku app it's primary it's verified now let's go ahead and view the details and it's going to direct us to Google domains to actually manage it. So let's click on manage domain. That's gonna take us to domains.google.com. Make sure that you sign in with the same email address that you set up G Suite with. 
you may have to change the email that you're signed into. Here it is. So we're going to come in and manage. And I'm going to show you, look at this, the DNS records are already set up. It added the Google Workspace DNS on its own, the MX, the SPF. We've got the DKIM record. All it's missing is a DMARC record, which I'm going to show you how to add in just a second. So the next thing that you're going to want to do, uh, and then you need to do this from Google domains is come to domain overview. And we're going to want to forward this domain to our primary domain. So website forward to an existing web page, And this is where you'll put the primary domain that you want that domain forwarded to. So I've input the domain and this is going to be a 301 permanent redirect. And we're going to do not forward the path SSL on. Now that that's done, it's important to note that this is where you're going to purchase all of your additional domains. So remember two senders per domain. So you can load this thing up with domains. I'm going to go ahead and purchase one right now through Google domain so that you can see how the workflow works. I found a domain to purchase. So I'm going to go ahead and get the .com add to cart. All right. So now we're purchasing the domain. We're in the cart privacy protections on auto renew is on. I'm going to leave custom email off and go ahead and check in. All right, so I've got my brand new domain. We're gonna do the same thing here with website forwarding. And now let's add this to our Google workspace. So let's come back into Google domains or sorry, admin.google.com. And we're gonna go ahead and add a domain up here. Now the domain name we can go ahead and grab from this new domain. It is a secondary domain and we're gonna start verification because it's linked by the same email address, you will not have to do very much to verify that email. If it was not, you would have to add a TXT record and spend some time actually verifying it. But it's the same email address linked to Google admin and Google domains. So it's a one click verification. Now, as you'll see here, it's verified, but we need to activate Gmail. So we're going to set up MX records, we're going to let this do it for me. We are already signed in. We're going to go ahead and connect once we uh, confirm that we're signed into Google domains. And just like that, the records are linked. And now, as you can see, Gmail has been activated. So now all we have to do to set up a new email account on this is add users. So I'm going to go ahead and add a user now, just so you can see just how easy this is. So this is where you can also add a profile picture. Uh, make sure that the correct dropdown is selected when you're managing multiple email accounts, you can select create any user for any domain here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add a new user and it's going to automatically add this to our billing account. So that's all we essentially need to do. It is extremely powerful. I'm going to go ahead and refresh now and we should have two email users. Here we go. Now we have two cold email accounts set up and ready to go, ready to start warming. Now we've discussed a lot of things here, setting up a Google workspace account, creating users, adding domains, purchasing domains, how to downgrade your plan to that $6 per month. Now, next I'm going to show you how to add a DMARC record. It's one of the last things we need to do to edit this sender account, to edit the domain before it's ready to add to instantly to start warming. So I'm, I'm going to speed through this part because I, I've discussed it in other videos. And once we're done adding that DMARC record, we're going to go into instantly and show you that how to actually set this up to start warming. All right, we are on easydmark.com, the DMARC record generator. This is a free tool. Now we're going to have to do this for every single domain that we have, not every email, but every domain. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out and I'll see you in just one second. All right, now I filled this out accordingly. Take a screenshot if you need to set the policy type to none reports send to an inbox. I like to add plus DMARC just so I know where it came from. Subdomain policy, none relaxed, relaxed, same email. And I set this to zero generate. And just like that, we've got a DMARC record and I'll show you how to insert it right now. All right, we're coming back to Google domains. This is where we manage all of the DNS records. So this one is for getcoapp.com. We're going to go ahead and manage, manage DNS. And now, as you can see here, it's very easy to add a new record. So for any DMARC, we're going to go ahead and do a TXT record. We are going to grab the DMARC records. I'm going to copy this. The host name is always going to be underscore DMARC. The TTL I set as low as possible. I paste the data. We're going to go ahead and save. Now you only have to do this once per domain, not once per workspace. Now it's really easy is if you're doing it for multiple domains at the same time, all you have to do is come back up here and put your next domain here. Now the next domain that I'm going to be setting this up for is this one here. So I'm just going to replace it with the new domain, hit generate. 
And now I've got a DMARC record for the second domain. All right, and we're finally ready to connect our email addresses too instantly to start warming. Remember to warm for at least two weeks. Now I'm not gonna go over warm up settings too much, mostly just connecting the Gmail account too instantly. So let's go ahead and click we're on email accounts, add new, Gmail G Suite. Now we're gonna to have to go into that account and do a couple of things here. So once you're in one of those Gmail accounts and you've already created passwords, you can log into them individually. We're gonna go into settings, see all settings, forwarding and POP slash IMAP. Now here you can also set up a forwarding address. This is going to be wherever you wanna set your unified inbox, but we're gonna enable POP and enable IMAP. And then the next step, yes, IMAP has been enabled. It's gonna give you two options here. One is O authentication. Now this is kind of cool because it's going to authenticate the entire domain. And this one's at password. So we're gonna go with O authentication in this case. Uh, if for some reason the connection keeps breaking, you can disconnect and try at password. So following the instructions here, we're gonna go into our Google Workspace admin panel, add app, and then select OAuth app name or client ID. So let's go ahead and figure that out now. Here we are, we're in add app. It takes us right to this page, OAuth app name or client ID. Now we're going to go ahead and grab that client ID from right here. Go ahead and follow along the steps, all users, trusted and now let's go ahead and finish so that we can integrate all of those emails awesome that is set let's make sure that it worked all right we have successfully linked our gmail account now again it's not on it's not warming now i'm going to do all that in just a second be sure to watch my video on best warm-up setting practices for cold email. And that's going to conclude the video. I hope you enjoyed this Google setup process. It is very easy. And actually between this video, I scaled this up to four domains and eight senders in the matter of minutes. You can't do that with any other workflow or process. Now with Google, you're gonna spend a few more dollars, but it's gonna be more trusted. You're likely going to be emailing mostly Gmail users. So it's native. It's going more to be more likely to go through and they're gonna see that profile picture, which is going to put you at a huge advantage. If you like this video, please like it so that you see more like this in your feed. And if you have friends who are working on their cold email, send this to them. And if you have questions or concerns, please drop it in the comments. I respond to every comment personally. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.